all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. In this case, Lucy. This is Lucy from the Snoopy series. And I wanted my little farmer because nobody represents hard work more than farmers, at least farmers that I grew up with. So all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. This is one of those idioms that they're not absolutely sure of the origin. Where did it really come from? They know it was around in 1659, uh, but they're not sure of the exact makeup and origin and, and who said it first and where it came from. Uh, the movie The Shining in 1980 made it absolutely famous when it appeared uh, throughout the movie and especially in the, the book scene where, uh, I can't remember the wife's name, but she discovers that Jack has been typing over and over again this line, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Now that of course was a, a very scary movie, so I, I barely remember it, but uh, I, th I don't think I've seen it since. Maybe maybe I've seen it twice in my whole life, but since 1980, that's a long time ago. But it made the, this phrase absolutely positively famous. And what does it mean? It means if a person only works and works all the time, they're going to be very dull. They're not going to be very interesting. They might be interesting to the people that are in the same line of work, but everybody else on the planet is going to find them pretty boring and pretty dull. Why I picked Lucy is because Lucy's kind of a know-it-all, right? She's always in people's business and giving advice, which if you focus on work all the time and all you do is work all the time, it will, it can, number one, cause burnout. It can cause mental stress and mental anxiety. It can actually kill you. How do I know? Because in 2010, I had a sudden cardiac arrest and it was primarily because all I did was work. All I did was work, 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 you know, raise my kids and work. And that was it. And got to the point of stress and burnout that just flatlined me. So there's a lot of negative things to focusing entirely on work. It's true in our businesses and our organizations as well. If people focus only on their area of interest and only on their job and only on work and we expect them to work all the time. We're in corporate America. I found myself working 70 to 80 hour weeks and I realized if I'm going to work 70 to 80 hour weeks for somebody else, why would I not be building my own businesses and working and putting in that kind of effort to support myself and my family and my future. And that's what I eventually did in 2003. I was, I finally left corporate America. I'd been there about 25 years and was like, all right, I've been doing businesses on the side. And it was like, it's time to focus my energy on my business, not on growing other people's businesses. And we have to remember that the people that are working and helping us to build our business and our organizations, we want them to love the, working there and being a part of the organization so much that they don't want to go out and start their own business. Now, it doesn't mean we want to prevent them from doing that. One of my favorite things was when people left the organization or the business or the company I was in to go do something that was more in alignment or more for them to make their life better. Because whenever anyone is doing something that's for them and makes the world a better place, it improves the entire world. So we always want people to be moving and, and growing in the direction that's right for them. But in our companies, how do we do this? How do we in our businesses instill a little bit of play, a little bit of fun, a little bit of creativity so that we don't find ourselves creating little blocks of boring robots, really, boring work bots, because we don't want to be work bots. We have to remember that our lives, I don't like the word balance, but there has to be a mix of what works for each of us individually. To be honest, working is my thing. I love creating things and working and doing things and trying to make the world a better place. So if I could, work would be my play and my hobbies as well, but it makes me pretty boring. If I focus on one thing, which is something we always tell people to do when they're starting out in the business world and, and creating their business, especially online. I learned this going from the offline world to the online world is that you really need to focus on business. Where I felt pressure in the offline world to expand and grow and get into different areas with my business online, it's all narrowing, 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 and having a very narrow focus. Well, if all you ever do, all you ever talk about, all you ever share is about your business, your narrow focus, people are gonna find you really boring and not interesting. That's true in any area or, or walk of life. Even at networking meetings, if all you do is go and talk about yourself and pitch your product, people are not gonna be very interested in you purpose of networking is to be interested in other people and finding out about them so you can find out if what you have to offer really can help them. If not, 
then next, who, who, is, who are you really here to serve? Because business, bottom line, is all about creating and serving value to other people. When you create value and service to other people, they buy your products and services and they create value in the terms of money, usually money and resources to your organization, to your company. So how do you do that in a way that's interesting and creative, solves their problems and isn't boring? That's everybody's challenge. That's our challenge every day. How do I show up in the world, create value, serve the people I'm here to serve and not be boring? For other people, for some people, it's easy. For others of us, we have to have to try a little harder to not be boring. So love to know your experience with this particular idiom. Do you have phases in your life where you've been a total workaholic? I grew up, I was raised by workaholics. And so I think it's just sort of in my genes to, to work and, and want to be creating and, and learning and growing and, and seeing what I can accomplish all the time. But a lot of people, that, that doesn't work for them. They need X amount of time to work, then they need X amount of time for rest and relaxation, then they need X amount of time for um, pursuing other interests. Um, there's lots of ways to pursue other interests. There's lots of ways to add creativity and fun and play and celebration and milestones to our businesses to make sure that people aren't always working and always on task. And if we're expecting them to be, then that's our mistake because we're the one growing the business and creating the change in the world. They're just playing a part and helping with it, but we can't expect them. And this is a, a thing I fell into when I was younger. I expected the people that worked in my organization to work not as hard as I did, but to work pretty darn hard and give, you know, give a, a lot of effort toward doing the projects and creating the things that we were creating together. And it doesn't always work that way. It doesn't always work that way with our, our employees, our partners, our teammates, everybody is coming at the situation from a different point of view, a different level of experience, a different level of motivation and participation. And we have to be um, able to figure that out and balance that to keep it interesting and fun and exciting for everyone. All right, have an amazing day. I'll be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? If we know where it came from and when it came from and uh, what you can do and how you can use it in your business and in your life. Love to know how many people actually have seen The Shining and uh, what you think about that movie. I still, certain hotels, I'll walk in the, in the alley and I'll be like, oh no, it reminds me of The Shining or it reminds me of some other scary movie. All right, have a great day. I'll be with you tomorrow. Bye.